All we need is a little understanding Walk a mile in their shoes And if we keep our hearts open-minded We'll enjoy this wild ride called life And if we keep our hearts open-minded We'll enjoy this wild ride, this wild ride called life Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of the True Sweet Hide podcast. Today we have Carrie Jeter of Freedom Sisters Magazine, Freedom Sisters Media, freedomsisters.com, all the things. But what I love about Carrie is that she's just a real person behind all the titles that she holds. Her authenticity is what brings people in and I feel that that is more that's what we need more of in the world so i really appreciate her time and for the things that she does for all of us women veterans so thank you carrie for being on here today i appreciate you please tell us your story hi it's it's great to be here i've been a fan of yours for some time and i'm just so excited that we continually get to cross collaborate on multiple things and so like annette said um, my name is carrie jeter i'm a 12-year army veteran um i served in the army national guard the whole time of my service um, but i was always in the uniform full time i served in missouri maryland and um washington state um and then you know training and all of that. I spent most of my training in South Carolina, but um, I went from an E3 to an O3 in six years and um, got out as a senior captain because I had a surprise child uh, four years ago. So I've been out a little over four years now and I missed it so much. Um, it was really hard to actually walk away from the army, um, but I knew, like, I just knew that I was being called somewhere else. Um, but yeah, fast forward like three years in this wilderness place of trying to figure out who I am, what I'm going to do next. Um, I didn't just want, I'm young enough and able-bodied to work. Um, I do have a hearing disability, but outside of that, like I love working. I am very, I love being very active. And so I wanted to do something with a purpose. And um, that's where um, Freedom Sisters was kind of um, the next thing for me. Um after the uniform, this is, I've done other work. I've worked currently still working for a fire district, but am, you know, on the trajectory of, of getting enough sales and momentum and sponsorships to be able to leave this position at the, by the end of 2021. And so I'm just really excited for what Freedom Sisters Media is all about and the incredible work um, and the incredible women that I've already been able to meet um, because of saying yes to um, what I will say as a calling on my heart um, and and all of that. So that's me in a nutshell. <laughs> I'm a mom. I'm a mom and a wife. <laughs> that's, important. that's important to my story, actually. And I've always been a sister. I've never had brothers. I, I was the youngest of three. So I was raised as a sister. So from day one, um, so that's one of the reasons why my company is called Freedom Sisters. But um, I'm a wife. I have a, a great, incredibly supportive husband. Um, we are still kind of in a young marriage. We've We'll be married for four years in May. Um, and he is a 26-year Army veteran as well. And uh, we have two children together, but he had three and I had three and we had two together. So we have a family of eight um, and only three at home. So that's there's the rest of me. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you look amazing for all the kids. Thanks. I, have, I got a new ID the other day and I looked like I'm 12 and I'm like, oh, this is awesome. So good. Right. How was the transition process? You said that it was difficult to leave, but I mean, I understand why you did, but how was it besides all that? Like, how do I put this? When you decided to leave, did you kind of have an idea what you wanted to do? Were you in that mindset of, okay, this is going to happen. I have a plan, you know, all, all that. Cause there's a lot of us who get out and we're like, I don't freaking know what I'm going to do. I have no 
I lost my identity. I don't know what my purpose is. How is it for you? Yeah, well, it was so stark. I mean, I had no idea what I was going to do, except that um, this was kind of a sweet moment. I mean, I had already obtained my college education. I already felt like I had some kind of a career under my belt. And so I was in a fortunate situation with him working full time that I was able to take a year off. I did. I took, I didn't work for a year. I worked from home, um, taking care of our baby and just having that precious time that I never had before with a newborn. Um, and you know, I was, I was a 16 year old mom and I went back to high school in two weeks from having my son to being back hitting the books and, and finishing my high school, um, time. And so, uh, and then I became a mom again at 19 and a mom again at 21, almost 22. And so I literally always worked. It was like, just bounce back, go back to work and, and part-time, full-time, whatever the capacity was just to survive, just to make our lives better. Cause I didn't want to, to not have a good life for them. So leaving, it was just this really nice, special moment that I was able to have and just breathe and relax and try to, uh, take that time to heal, you know, physically, emotionally, and and all the things of where to go next. And um, I had just come off of a tenure with Miss Veteran America. And so I knew uh, advocacy work was like a natural um, extension of who I was as a person. It really matters. I really do believe in the underdog. I really do want um, women especially to thrive in life and not just fall to the circumstances that maybe had um, bestowed upon them in their journey, right? And so during that tenure, I really fell in love with my sisters in service, not because she looked like me, acted like me, did exactly what I was doing, but that she decided to serve. And she was a part of this legacy of service for our country. And um, I really just started to believe um, in, in, in her right? As a woman, not just as a number or somebody who served, but starting to put faces and names to women beyond the uniform really was transformational for my heart. And, um, and so, yeah, I, I just took some time and, and, and out of my own spiritual journey and mental health journey, uh, feeling like I'm not enough, feeling like there's more, there's gotta be more to life than just this, um, and on Valentine's Day 2019, I went to bed pretty upset, pretty like broken down, like, okay, it's been a it's been over a year. Like, what am I gonna do now? Um, and I had already been working at this job um with the fire district. And it just, although it did bring me some community and it did bring me a sense of purpose, it didn't bring all of that I am capable of. Um, it didn't use all of my skill sets and things. And so I uh, went to bed pretty discouraged, not because of work, but just my own mental health journey and cried out to God. And I'm a believer, so I'm going to just talk authentically for for how it was. And I went to bed like, I, you called me out of obedience to compete for the better in America. You put me in this circle. You put me in this. You did like, it's three years. Where What's next? Like, God, what is next? You know, and I feel really discouraged. I it don't really fit into the necessarily the, the Christian church um, expectations of what women should be like or what women should look like. I have tattoos. I have multiple. I have kids by different baby daddies. Like I just don't fit completely into that mold. Um, and so it was kind of like um, looking to belong there and not really belonging there. But like I love them. They're great. I love my church, but it just felt like there was a disconnect a little bit. Um, and so, you know, crying out to him in despair Well, I went to bed in that despair and just open hands, open heart, like, what is it? And I'm not saying I was talking to God directly in my dream, but in my dream, an angel or some kind of subconscious download of freedom sisters with this image of my logo, which you can kind of see here in the background, um, manifested. And so I woke up and text on my phone, um, Googled freedomsisters.com. And it was available to my surprise. I'm like, oh, it's got to be taken. And uh, so from there, from that nugget, thanks, that's so sweet. From that nugget, I um, took some time. I took four months of 
prayer and research, seeing what this could be, how I can manifest it. And it manifested itself in a podcast initially. Um, and yeah, through that, we're sharing the soulful stories of women veterans to help others overcome, heal and thrive. Um, and then from there, sitting, you know, for a year behind the mic and talking to women, when you shut down the recording of their story and hearing other things that they're struggling with in their business. And it was like network and funding and marketing and how did you find the consumer and all of those things. And I'm like, media, like media, this is such is the way to do it, especially free media, which is like CBS, uh, any like national network, whether it's that's for broadcasting, but then looking at newspapers and radio and all of the things that I had the experience of like connecting and sharing those stories authentically for the American public. And I was like, well, what can I do? And so I thought a documentary was going to be next and um, COVID hit and it was revealed to me almost kind of in the same kind of sequence of what would be next. And when the documentary doors were shutting, um, the magazine publication stuff was opening. And so each conversation, each time I looked up how to do something, it was like, oh, I could do that. Oh, I could do that. Oh, well, there was this. And all the doors were like flying open, uh, including my call to writers. I was like, okay, I could manage this project, but I cannot write a full magazine on my own. Um, so I did a call to action and we got 30 beautiful women to respond. And you... 30 have been the core of the content um, contributing writers for the magazine. And it's because y'all believe in it too. And so it's just been, it's been wild and wonderful and a lot of work, but so each day I wait with like the promise on my heart of I'm doing the work that I've been called to do. I'm doing the work to help amplify women veterans. I'm changing the narrative for our stories we don't look like the army stock photos that everyone sees um, and really help amplify us. So the American public no longer sees us as this invisible force, but we are ever present in your communities. Um, we are a really diverse, beautiful group of brilliant women who are impacting the American society, both in and out of the military. And uh, I just think it's, it's incredible, humbling and very fulfilling work. How do I talk that? So <laughs> I, what I really appreciate because we don't talk about it a lot is our faith. And for me personally, I've lost and found my ways all my life. I even went to an all girl Catholic high school, um, did all the sacraments, did all those things. But still there were times in my life where I was like, God's not answering my prayers when I want it. So, you know, I'm just not going to, I'm just going to do my thing. But you have come on here and you have talked about how you went and found that love and found that faith and it's in your heart. And you're just like, you're, you're going for it, no matter what your past is, you know, no matter what people think or what they say, this is you you're living your life authentically. You're living it with love you're doing your passion, your mission. And I think that's so important to share with everybody who's listening or watching, not to let your past define you. Like you are you and who cares what everybody else thinks, you know, like whatever you believe in, something is there protecting you and guiding you and it's up to us to open up our eyes or listen. Um, so see, watch, listen, all those things. Because I know that I was just like, I've got this, I have control. And I think as a being raised in the army, right? We have that stubborn side to us. We're like, we've got this, we're tough, we're strong, but sometimes inside we feel so weak and lost. So we put up this front or we wear this mask. So I, I really, I just, I really do appreciate that you have shared that part because so many people need to hear it. And I don't know, I'm just like. Yeah, and I'm not like, it's not like a gold stamp of approval and my life is all roses and there's no, yeah. break, there's no, there's no setbacks, right? But it's not just all those cliche like fail forward or bounce back or you know all that. at the bottom of the pit is a trampoline because honestly that's not necessarily always true it's literally 
step by step digging out a new hole from the pit so you could put your hand in there so then you could reach and make a new one so you can create your own ladder out of that pit it's not always this cliche beautiful thing and for a long time like i thought a relationship with jesus was going to be transactional like um you know when i was i first discovered jesus when i was nine years old and i thought he was going to come in and change um, my circumstances to be a better life for my parents to live together for drugs and addiction to no longer be a part of our story. And like, that was, I mean, I was nine years old. So drugs weren't my story, but they were my parents' story and addiction was their story. And it wasn't, it, he didn't come in and radically change their heart, but he, he, that's what like it was supposed to be. Right. But I, as, as a naive nine-year-old thought it was like rubbing the magic genie and Jesus was going to make my life and my circumstances better. And when he didn't like, and it, there's this transactional, like, well, I stepped into this and you failed. Like, okay, how's the world um, telling me to heal and overcome and all the things. And the world will take you. I mean, by the change of the wind, I, I changed, you know, who I was dating or what kind of clothes I was wearing or what kind of job I had or who I was hanging out with to like try to fill this giant gaping hole within myself. And um, it wasn't until, you know, much, much later, 2009, where I had already experienced a great deal of life, a great deal of heartache, um, had been a domestic violence survivor, had been, um, you know, divorced twice in the army already. And uh, raising kids and all, all the, all the hurts, like until I really realized who Jesus was and what he could and how he, what he did for us. Right. And, and what this relationship is, is not transactional, but just like any relationship, it's what you put into it is also what you can get out of it, but it doesn't mean it's transactional. It's very relational. Um, and so it's been a constant effort of, of refining and forgiving. Um, mercy has been a huge part of my, a huge part of my story because literally we are not a sum of our past mistakes, like you said. Um, and even though um, I have lived some really crazy things and have made and have inflicted some of the pain on myself, you know, um, by, by just choices that I had made, but um to realize and forgive and to know that just because those things happen doesn't mean it's a trajectory of where my future is going to go. And that's the part where I'm like, I'm going to be authentic, lean me. Um, I am strong-willed. I am a leader. I am independent, but I am also, I have a giant heart, you know, and I, and it, it, is, it is covered a lot of the times with this facade of like, I mean business because I do. Um, but like the things that I'm doing, it's because my I, I care deeply for, for instance, military sexual trauma survivors. I have not experienced that trauma myself. I have seen toxic leadership. I have seen um, things go a little too far, but um, been able to, you know, remedy them. I've done some sexual impure things myself, but I am not a victim of trauma. Um, I'm a victim of domestic violence. That was very traumatic, but not of, of this caliber, which to me, sexual trauma, sexual violence is like a soul crushing crime. And because I care deeply for these women, I'm willing to put my neck out there. I'm willing to step into the ring and fight on the front lines with organizations who are doing the work that's for the people, never alone advocacy group, which has an incredible team, Amy Frank. Uh, General Shadley, Camilla Shadley, uh, Colonel West Martin, just doing remarkable work for women who have suffered at the hands of these offenders and the abuse of power. Um, so using my skill set to share those stories, um, it's scary at times. I mean, I'm not even going to lie. It's like, I don't fear for my life or anything like that, but it's like, uh, you know, putting your name out there when I'm all about empowering, but at the same time, I want safe and secure and security for women and men who want to serve in our armed forces. And so I, I, I only am in that fight because my heart is like giantly bleeding for these women for justice, you know? Um, but I'm, I'm tough as nails. So 
I'm not going to back down without, I'm not backing down out of this fight. You know, we're getting our ass handed to us sometimes in the fight, but it doesn't matter. Like we're still showing up and we're still fighting for those who aren't here. There's a lot of victims who have died um, by murder, by suicide or by murder, by their offenders. And they can't speak for themselves. So we we're doing that. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, it just, it's crazy. And all because of the skill sets that the army has, has afforded me. I mean, they gave me the skill sets of journalism. They gave me the skill sets of, um, PAO and how to network and do media liaison and write stories and all of that. Um, and then they also showed me what I was capable of, uh, you know, put me in any kind of situation and I was able to adapt and overcome and figure out the problem, the solution to the problem. Um, and so they've really equipped me with this confidence to, um, to take them on head, head, head first, you know, into battle uh, and be able to lead others to lead others well is one of the things that I really do feel like the army um, helped shape. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know. I just, I love what I'm doing. I love our women warriors. I think the world, whether they served one year, two year, 30 plus years, like you're incredible. And I want your story to be known by the world. I, I love all of that. I think absolutely. I absolutely think that what you're doing is important. So I'm, I'm like all for it. And I support, I support it wholeheartedly. And I know many of us do. So I think you are absolutely called to do this. And I think that's why, I mean, if you guys are listening, I can see the fire in her, but if you're watching, you'll be able to see it too. So wherever you're going to listen to this, it's, it's radiating out of the, out of the computer. So I, I encourage all of you to reach out and support any way you can, because I know that that's what we need, right? We need that support to keep sharing the stories and to keep fighting for justice and fighting for the right to use our voice. So how do you, how do you take time for yourself though? I mean, you do all these things and you're raising kids and you're, you know, your spouse and the business owner and magazine and, and all these things, but what do you do for you? Well, I think that's what this is. This is a part of my healing journey. And so the, the work that I'm doing it, sometimes it is stressful, um, but it is, it's like, it's fueling, it's my fuel. It's, it's my passion. It's, it's my, it's my everything um, outside of my faith, outside of my family. And so when I am doing this work, it is definitely, um, I'm doing it for myself and the sense of that it's fulfilling and it's something that I enjoy doing. And so writing stories or, um, you know, coming up with the creative ways that we're, we're pushing the story or fun titles or puns or, you know, writing, um, designing, laying out things. That is absolutely what I love. I do. I have, I, I love reading. So I love reading. Um, I have a stack of books that, you know, on your rack behind your toilet, um, I, because I'm a mom, I let her like, after I put the kids to bed, I'll like hang out in the bathroom for read a chapter or two and then get into the shower. Uh, just cause it's quiet. It's soulless. It's a little cooler in the bathroom for whatever reason. And so like, I'm just hanging out. It's not like, you know, I'm, I'm a man like taking my 40 minute poop break, but I'm like, it's just like a part of my routine to get into the shower. I'll read a little bit. Um, and so I do that for myself and I try to meet up with a group of army sisters once a year. Um, one of them for sure, we always see each other. I just love her dearly. And so um, I try to do little trips like that. And um, yeah, that's pretty much all I, what I do. Oh, we have a, like we live on a homestead. And so, you know, we garden and we hang out outside with the kids when we can, when it's not raining, I'm in the Pacific Northwest. So, um, so we camp and we hike and we do things like that when the weather's nice. Um, so those are what we, that's what I do for myself. Um, I definitely love scripture too. And I love reading it with the perspective of being a woman and looking at how God has literally used women throughout the entire book of the Bible. Um, and my next, I think one of my next big projects, if you will, is to uh, partner with what well, we already are partnering, but writing a book with Nicole Smith, who is, you also know, um, for identity and looking at who God says we are and um, 
and sharing that with our community. I'm really excited about that um, too, because it gets me in the word, uh, which I love. Um, so yeah, I think it's really, I think it's really important that the work you're doing doesn't, I don't want to say it doesn't feel like work because sometimes it absolutely does and your mm. name's on it. So you want to produce a good product and you want to produce that. But I think because it's such a part of the story of my life that it doesn't feel like I'm taking anything else away from any other part of my life when I'm doing this work. Um, so when I get home, I mean, there's, I have to be very cognizant, like where my feet are. So is my heart, you know? So it's like a couple nights a week. I try not to even be on my phone. Um, I try not to pull my computer out and do actual work until either the kids are in bed and he's doing his thing. Um, I cook every night. We have dinner at the table every night. Um, and so those things all are important and are a priority too. So it's just a matter of um, maintaining those good boundaries of, and, and then when you do get that call, you're like, Hey, so cool. I take this call. Like it's impeding our time, you know, then you take the call because for the majority of what you're doing, you have these boundaries set up for your family. So, um, I think that's a really long-winded answer to your question, but no, but it's important to, to, to help it. <laughs> it's important to share it because there are, I think when you find your passion, it, it, it doesn't become, it's not work, right? Cause you wake up each day, like, how am I going to impact the world today? What can I bring? But you do have to set boundaries because we could get so focused and sitting behind the computer for eight hours, like I do. And then it's five o'clock. You're like, oh my God, I have to make dinner. I have a son at home. I have to remember there's people outside of this room that need <laughs> that me, need me to show up. So, yeah. and it's okay. It's okay to do that, right? It's okay to set a boundary. It's okay to not look at your phone. We just get so used to it because we're like, we come up with these ideas and it's like, oh my God, I got to write this down right now. I was at the gym this morning. And I had an idea. I literally stopped my workout in the middle of CrossFit and got to my phone and did a voice note because it was like, if I don't write it now, I'm going to forget. So we just get so, so yes. wrapped up, but it's, it's. But I think that's important. And that like, I think that's the key. I think a lot of people fail to listen to those ideas. And I feel like, um, I don't even know who said this, the chick that wrote Eat, Love, Pray. I don't remember her name. Elizabeth, oh, yeah. I think. Is it Elizabeth Gilbert? Yes. Okay. Yes. She said ideas. She wrote another book. She's wrote other books. And in one of them, she says, ideas are a living thing. If you aren't going to capture that idea and birth it into the world, somebody else is going to do it. And so I think a lot of people miss doing that. And then they miss doing something that was meant for them and somebody else gets to do it. And so I think, you know, I have a, I have books everywhere. I have notebooks everywhere. I have post-its, you know, and things because like, I know if I don't write it down, I might not get to it. It might be forgotten. And I don't want to forget what has been given to me, like out of thin air, like yeah. you, have idea. you have to, you have to honor that. I feel like so. I mean, CrossFit, just minus your time that you took to know, and then you get your final time. I didn't even care. I was like, I'm going to stop because it, it did. It came to me. And, and and you have to. You have to write it down because you don't want to forget this thing. But I think that's that just comes with the passion that we have for what we do. We want to, you know, continue. So yeah. um, how can people support you if they're not a writer or if they're not – physically involved with your work? How can they support you on the outside? I mean, shoot, share us on social media, make that connection. I have a few male allies um, who really do a great job connecting me with other women veterans that are doing incredible things. Um, if you are a business that supports women veterans, uh, there's always room for advertising or sponsorship or things like that, um, collaborations. Um, you are a host of something, you can always invite uh, us on, whether it's myself or one of my writers to talk about the project. Um, be a subscriber to the magazine. It's $28.99 a year. It's really economical. Um, and yeah, so that's what really how you could support us. And you know, our magazine, we do have a huge focus on entrepreneurship on the next mission outside of the uniform. Um, there are over 383,000 women veteran owned businesses 
are we have had a growth of like 295 percent in the last 10 years of women who are starting women veterans who are starting businesses so there's definitely a need for conduit like us to share their stories with the patriotic consumer and so you know sharing us on social media getting the word out there about what we're doing is always very helpful and um the magazine is not all business. There is a lot of that, but there's mentorship. There's our history. There's um, some fun workouts and like some lifestyle pieces, as well as the healing part, which is uh, we're looking at the complete woman uh, veteran. And so, uh, yeah, check it out. There's a free issue for everyone. If you go to our website, www.freedomsisters.com backslash magazine, you can get a free issue of the magazine and check it out and see if it's something you want to subscribe to. But yeah, we... Any any connection anyone would love to introduce somebody to us, we always welcome that. I love it. And you said on Instagram, are you on Twitter? I am on Twitter. I'm not very active. I need to be. Um, <laughs> but I, I feel like I need to be more active on Twitter to like in the fight for military sexual trauma and justice. Yeah. Like I feel like boom, boom, you know, like send down the rain, uh, send, you know whatever downrange and like fire missile kind of that's why I feel like Twitter would be really, really good uh, for us, but I'm on Instagram, LinkedIn. Uh, we both, ha we have a company and I have a personal page um, on LinkedIn. We're on Facebook, which is really just like twinkle over from link um, from Instagram. Um, I do get on there on occasion and, and drop links or stories because it's just easier to share hyperlinks on Facebook Oh, where else are we? Uh, and YouTube. We have a YouTube channel. So subscribe to that because we drop the podcast on there every week. Um, we Any of our productions that we do, we always throw up there. And then I'm starting a new segment called uh, The Truth of the Matter. And that's really more of like news you could use kind of stuff of um, like pushing back the, the American public. Really, it's like the rest of the story, the military's told you this chunk, and now I'm going to tell you this chunk so that maybe you could have a fuller understanding of what's going on. So that's really what the truth of the matter is all about. That sounds really good. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being on here. Everybody who's listening or watching, make sure to go to the podcast guide where you can find all her links and her pretty picture and how to contact her and go follow her. So thank you so much for being on here. Thanks, Annette, for the invitation. It's always a joy to see you. Thank you.